Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we looked at current, types of current, that is direct current and alternating current. We also looked at closed and open circuit and then finally we discussed the simple circuit where we said a simple circuit consists of a cell or a battery, then it consists of a switch, a wire and a bulb. However, if you have 10 batteries, like you can see a battery here on the screen, if we draw it like that, let's say we have 10 batteries, 10 bulbs, very 100 meters wire and three switches. It will be very hard for us to draw them on a book. So for to make the work simple, then we have what we call the simples which are used in electronics or in electric circuits. And in this lesson, we're going to discuss those simples which we can use to represent the different components in an electric circuit. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to identify and distinguish different symbols of components that are used in electric circuits and also state and explain their functions. So previously, when we were discussing a simple circuit, we realized that we can draw a cell very large like this one with a positive terminal indicated on each side and a negative terminal indicated on each side. Then a switch is very large also. Then we have a bulb, which is also very large. And then we have a wire with a, with a very large diameter. But now for clarity and neatness, symbols are used to represent the electrical circuit as components like in this case instead of us drawing a battery like that in the first diagram instead of drawing a battery like this one then we are going to draw our battery like this one here where we have the positive terminal along then we have the negative terminal drawing with using a very small uh, line like that and then there's a wire connected to it so this one will represent a battery then we have a switch. Instead of drawing a, a real switch like this one here, we are not going to draw that. Then what we will draw is something like this. You can see here on the screen. You just draw wires and then there's a, a connection there. Then you put some two dots at this point here. This one will be our switch. Then we have a bulb. Now instead of us drawing a bulb, a real bulb, like in this case, we are not going to draw this. We are going to draw a circle then with an across inside like this one here. So this one now will represent a bulb. Then a wire, we are going to draw very thin lines with 90 degrees angle at the corner. These wires in physics, we draw them with an angle of 90 degrees. Whenever a wire is making a corner, it must be 90 degrees. And that is the, how we use symbols to represent an electric uh, simple circuit. And also what you should know in your simple now, you must show us the direction of current. Like in this case, in the positive terminal where we have said it's a long uh, line with a negative terminal, a very short line. So that will be the positive terminal. Then the other one should be the negative terminal. And we said current flows from the positive, so it will flow in this direction. Then here it will flow down the way they have indicated here. Then here it will flow like that, flow like this case, like this case, and also come back to the negative terminal of the battery. So apart from those few symbols that we have looked at in a simple circuit, we have other common uh, electric symbols, and they include a cell. The first one that we have looked at is was a cell, and a cell you draw it with a very large line to represent the positive terminal, then the small line represents the negative terminal, and then it should be connected to a wire. So the first case here, our one is a cell with a positive terminal as the long line, then negative terminal as the short line like that. Then now when you have main cells connected together, like if you have two cells in this case, then you will draw them as a long line, like in this number two, then when you have two more than two cells, we call them a battery. Then when you have a battery, 
then you have in this case one line long followed by a short line then another line which is long followed by another line which is short so you can draw it like this for a battery you draw it a long line followed by a short line long line followed by a short line like this like in this case now you will have three cells where the first cell is this one the second one is this one then the third one is that one then we have a switch a switch is just drawn the way we have looked we have seen in the previous part a switch you just draw a line and then you make a corner there and then you draw another line where there is no connection in between now that if you want to close this switch you would just connect this one down like that then we have a bulb a bulb is drawn using a circle using a circle with a cross inside a circle with a cross inside or if you want to draw a filament lamp you just draw a circle like this one here and then you draw a limp like that then we have what we call fixed resistor these are devices which resist or regulate the amount of current flowing in a conductor this is number four in this case uh three was switch four was a bulb and six we have fixed resistors fixed resistors they regulate the amount of current flowing in a conductor so they are drawn like this you draw a rectangle like that and then uh, two uh, lines like that so they will represent a fixed resistor variable resistor we have these are also they regulate the amount of current in a conductor but you can vary the extent at which they regulate if you want it to regulate too much current it will regulate and if you want to re regulate a small amount of current it can regulate so it's drawn like this just like a fixed resistor however the difference is that it has this line here with an arrow that is that makes it to be a fixed uh, variable resistor then we have a fuse fuse is drawn like you can see here a fuse you draw a box like this and then you draw a continuous wire or a line in between it or you simply draw two circles and then you interchange your lines like that this one will be a fuse and a fuse here is going to regulate the amount of current which is flowing and if the current is too much it will break that's why it's called a fuse and then we have capacitors capacitors are drawn like cells but in this case the lines of a capacitor are the same this vertical line like this they are of the same height so a capacitor is drawn like that with a positive side and a negative side but what's important to note is that for a capacitor the two vertical lines are equal but for a cell one line is large which is the positive and then the other one is small which is the negative now a capacitor we're going to discuss them in electrostatics 2 in form 3 and we're going to realize that capacitors they store charges they store charges then we have what we call rail start rail start these are also capacitors so this was a fuse was eight capacitor was nine ten we have rail start these are also um resistors and they are, they are variable resistor you can vary resistance from one point to another or from one resistance to another resistance then we have what we call a meter a meter remember we have said is a device which is used to measure amount of current so a meter is drawn like this you draw a line and then a circle in between and then a line follows and then inside you draw uh, a simple a that represents an ammeter and it's used to measure the amount of current then we have another device number 12 which is we call a voltimeter a voltimeter it's used to measure the potential difference or the emf of uh, a component or of a connection so you draw uh, um, for you to draw a voltimeter you just draw a line a circle in between a line follows and then in between you write a v then number 13 and the last uh sim symbol of a component is a galvanometer a galvanometer or sometimes it's called a center zero galvanometer you just draw a, a wire and then a circle followed by a wire and the inside you draw a line like this with an arrow or sometimes you write g 
So that means it's a galvanometer, and the function of this galvanometer is to show the direction of flow of current. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will talk about potential difference and electromotive force.